This is Pop Culture Period Piece Podcast. I'm Laura. And I'm Julie. We are actors, costumers, movie, and book enthusiasts. But we have very different tastes. So every week we pick a pop culture period piece to talk about. Our thoughts about the movie and also anything the movie brings up. Like how the mummy is totally written through the female gaze and Santa Fe from Newsies is the ultimate I want song. Do you know what that is? Listen to us. So if you like movies with corsets, manners, and cottage core aesthetics, give us a listen. Pop culture period piece has a new episode dropping every Thursday. Goodbye. Bye. Alex, why are you hanging on to the television? It's Stevie. Yeah, Terrence Russell McCormick. He's so cute. No, it's not Terrence somebody. It's Stevie. Okay. Look, honey, your father and I have to go. Are you okay? Stevie, he's on the television. Every week. I didn't think you liked that show. What show? Where's Stevie? He's on the television. Alex, I don't understand. It's Stevie. Right, from the TV show. What TV show? Where's Stevie? He's on the television. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to D Commentaries. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome to you and welcome to our listeners. Today, we're talking about You Wish. Yay. Also, hi, Val. It's been a while. I know. It's been so long. We were on vacation. We were on so much vacation. So much vacation. We went to the same place. <laughs> That's right. We did. Without go. each other. Without each other. But we had fun. We had fun. And we are, well, you'll probably have seen it already, but we made a fun thing. We made a fun. So go check out our Instagram. Yeah. And our TikTok. And our to talk. To talk. To talk. To talk. Um, And we just decided uh, we're going to dress as a couple for Halloween. So. We are. <laughs> Stay if tuned you for those can, photos. Yeah, if you can guess our Halloween costume for a Halloween party that we are going to together, um, you win a prize. Yeah, you definitely do. You'll win a shout out. Uh, You'll win a shout out on on this very on show. Spot. Yeah, let yeah. us know what you think our Halloween costume is. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's not decom related, but no. would say it's decom adjacent. Absolutely, decom adjacent and very on brand, especially for me, but for both of us. For both of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough clues. Yes, that's plenty of clues. Okay, Val, what a movie, huh? Oh, boy. My favorite part about this is I think we're going to have differing opinions on... Interesting. Uh, and we're going to be flipped from how we usually are. Okay. Okay. I'm interested that's to see what you mean. Yeah. But All I right. look forward to the conversation. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Yes, let's do the business. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to go. The business. Go out with uh, Al's dog and do my business. Do your business, Val. Okay. You Wish came out January 10th, 2003. So it was the first release of 2003. Cool. Um, again, there was a few month jump there because there was the, the last one was the Halloween release. Mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of spacing them out more in this era. And Val, 2003, what grade were you in in 2003? I was in sophomore and junior year of high school. I was in fourth grade <laughs> and fifth grade. <laughs> well, I could have babysat you. Oh, my gosh. You still can if you want. I definitely could <laughs> and will. <laughs> um, well, this movie. Uh, <laughs> this, Val this, texted me Oscar winning film. <laughs> this award winning uh, high caliber cinematic masterpiece uh, was directed by Paul Hohen. Uh, you'll recognize his name because he directed Luck of the Irish, True Confessions, and in the future, he directs uh, Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off, Jump In, Cheetah Girls, Dad Napped, Camp Rock 2, How to Build a Better Boy, and Zombies 1 through 3. 
Yes. So quite the decom resume. You Wish was written by, uh, well, it was based on a book by Jackie French Kohler, which as soon as I saw this was based on a book, I already was suspicious. Uh, and that is the only book that has ever been adapted to film by Jackie French Kohler. Mm. And then Cynthia Carl and Christopher Reed wrote the screenplay or adapted the book to a teleplay. And they didn't have a lot of writing credits. They both wrote um, something called The Sixth Man, mm. which felt kind of akin to this in some ways. Yeah. But otherwise, they didn't have much of a resume. So this is a okay. one-off for them in terms of DCOMs. And in my opinion, thank goodness. <laughs> <sighs> okay, here's the cast. AJ Troth played Alex Lansing. Uh, he is best known as playing Alan on Even Stevens. Uh, Spencer Breslin played Stevie Lansing slash Terrence Russell McCormick. He was in The Ultimate Christmas Present, which we watched a while back. Um, he's also known from the Santa Claus sequels, the Cat in the Hat movie, Raising Helen. Um, he mostly stopped acting after he exited the child actor category. Mm -hmm. um, but his sister, Abigail, still acts today. And mm -hmm. She's great. She is great. Lelaine, just Lelaine, no last name, uh, played Abby Ramirez. And she is absolutely best known as Miranda on Lizzie McGuire. Yep. So we had two even Stevens, Lizzie McGuire connections, which is not even the first time that's happened in a decom, which is fun. <laughs> then we had Tim Reed playing Larry Pendragon, the coin store owner. Yep. Um, he was in Alley Cat Strike as the competitive dad. Woo. Terrible movie. Great guy. Yes. He was probably the only good part in that movie. And he also played the dad in Sister, Sister. And he was in a show called Treme that was by the same guy who made The Wire. What's the show called? Treme. It's set in it's set in New Orleans just after Katrina. It's very, very good. Interesting. Yeah, okay. it's excellent. Peter Feeney played Dave Lansing, who is Alex and Stevie's dad. Um, he's a New Zealand character actor, which, by the way, I forgot to mention at the top that this was filmed in New Zealand. So everyone... Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. So every single person besides the lead actors is from New Zealand. And once you know that, you can hear all of them struggling with an American accent the entire movie. I legitimately thought that James was being dubbed over for a while. Yeah, it was it was weird. Mm -hmm. It was very weird. I like, I don't know, set it in New Zealand and just have them be American for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. Just it was dumb to have them try and do or just cast people who actually can do an accent. <laughs> like one of the two. Um because the dad especially like the parents were not great, but the mom was better at it than the dad, which was they they these parents had to do more than I expected they were gonna have to do at the beginning mm -hmm. of the movie. And so like if you're gonna have them have to talk a lot, then get people who can say the lines correctly. Yeah. Anyway, Sally Stockwell played the mom, Pam Lansing. She is also in Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. Oh, interesting. Um, but not I in wonder much if else. They, I wonder if they filmed that in New Zealand, too. Probably. Ari Boylan played James Cooper, who is Alex's best friend. He's a New Zealand character actor. All of these people were in two things. They were in one of two versions of Power Rangers that seem specific to, like, Australia and New Zealand. And... They were in Xena Warrior Princess. Those are like oh. the New Zealand staples, kind of like the Murdoch mysteries okay. of that. Um, so the, all of them were in at least one episode of both of those things. Okay. Emma Lahana played the like hot girl Fiona that Alex has a crush on. And she, again, is a New Zealand character actor, but she was also recently in Cloak and Dagger, which is like oh. a Marvel teen show. Mm hmm. Jay Ryan played Charles, uh, who I think is another jock, but he was in Top of the Lake, um, mm -hmm. which was a, a show we've talked about before. It is a New Zealand show, but Elizabeth Moss plays the lead in that oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Highly recommend. 
So weird thing about the synopsis this week. So normally what I do is I Google the movie and then there's like on the right side, there's always like a synopsis and I just quickly pull it without looking at all the other stuff and then put it into the uh, doc that I use for this show. That synopsis was not a synopsis this week. It was like a description of the movie, like like, uh, you know, a, a Disney Channel movie starring so and so and so and so oh. like it wasn't a synopsis. So I pulled the synopsis from IMDb mm. uh, and it is literally this. A teen accidentally wishes his younger brother away. <laughs> Not incorrect. <laughs> I mean, that is what happens. That is exactly what happens. The last time this happened, we looked it up on Disney Plus and read the synopsis. Oh, yeah. Let's see what that one says. Okay, this is very similar, I'd say. Alex Lansing often imagines how different life would be if his little brother Stevie weren't around. After receiving a magical coin that grants one wish, he's about to find out. That's a good synopsis. That's a good synopsis. That's a great Disney synopsis. Plus on there. Good Shit. job. Good job, Disney Plus. Good job, Disney Plus. Well, Al. Yeah. Please tell me what your first impressions were of this oh, film. Oh, thanks, Val. I missed hearing you say that <laughs> to me. I know how much you did not like this movie. <laughs> and this is what I was gonna say earlier. I didn't hate this movie. Fair. I really didn't. I was like. I think because I loved this movie as a kid that maybe that has some attachment to it, but I was fully going to be like, all right, I'll watch 40 minutes of it. And then I'll watch the next 40 minutes of it at another time. I just kept going through it. Val and I had a little uh, texty text about how much uh, we dislike Spencer Breslin. (laughs) Sorry, man. Just didn't. I wasn't feeling it. So the times that he wasn't on the screen, I did enjoy. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I'm sure he's a very lovely person now. In this movie, not my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had the hugest crush on um, AJ growing up, so mm-hmm. loved that. Um, I, yeah, was it well acted? No. Were some <laughs> of the lines great? No. Were some <laughs> of the directing choices and the camera placement great? No, oh. but did I have a good time? Yeah, I'm going to give this one a six and a half. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Darn. Val, first impressions. Whew. Okay, so I've never seen this movie before in my life. Okay, sad. And that is probably part of the reason why I have absolutely no nostalgic attachment to it or care for it mm-hmm. uh, in that I think way. this is going to start to happen a lot from probably. 2003 to 2000, probably, probably. 11. <laughs> but I'm wondering, here's what I'm wondering. I think that we're going to get to a point, though, where it's so far removed that I can enjoy it, like, because yeah. it's not, like, my generation anymore. It's sort of like, oh, isn't that cute? Like, it's, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think I'll have a different perspective on it. Like, these are still people who I, like, watched growing up and... Like, this is still my era, kind of. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's, it, I take it personally when it's this bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do think, too, that, like, some of the ones coming up, like, I think you're really going to, like, Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off. Like, we've got, you know, we're in 2003, but High School Musical isn't really too far away. No. You know, I think we're going to start to get into some, I think you'll, like, Stuck in the Suburbs. Like, those are my, you know. Yeah. Um. Uh, assumptions but i think that we'll start to get to some that you will like for sure yeah i have no concerns about finding movies that i'm gonna like moving forward this is just not one of this is not one of them and honestly this is pretty on brand for me in the sense of like i haven't really liked the book adaptations right that's very true none of them have been great no they haven't i just think they don't do a good job with those um and i get why they do them because it's easy you just buy the ip and then you just adapt it instead of having Mm -hmm. to write something from scratch but it's just They'd never do a good job. And also whenever they try to cut corners, like filming in New Zealand or something like that, it always the movie always suffers because the quality is just not as good. So basically, I thought AJ did a good job. I think he's a good actor, Mm -hmm. but he was having to carry most of this movie on his back by himself. Spencer Breslin and, you know, he might be a really nice, cool person, like as a human being, but as an actor, he is horrifyingly bad. Like it is like nails on a chalkboard to watch him act. And I felt that way in 
uh, the ultimate Christmas present too. He drove mm-hmm. me crazy in that movie and he drives me crazy in this movie. Like I just, I cannot stand him. And they're again, trying to like put a lot of this movie on his shoulders and it doesn't work because he can't carry it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it's sort of weird cause he's like supposed to be, I don't know, like 10, like he's supposed to be a little bit older, but he's behaving like he's like seven. Yeah. Which just doesn't make any sense to me. Like he's like incapable of like standing on his own two feet in, at all. Yeah. And it's very bizarre. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. So yeah. that felt weird. That dynamic felt weird. And then just like the story choices. And again, th- they might have been hamstrung to some degree by the book, by the book yeah. story. But like it felt like they were going around in circles, like over and over and over. Like we learned the lesson immediately be careful what you wish for right like right. that's it's the monkey's paw right like you get what you want and then it's not what you want mm-hmm. and then that happened like first of all this the wish didn't happen until 22 minutes into the movie yeah so we had to watch drudge through all of this setup for 22 which was minutes over over and over again right which was really repetitive and just boring and stupid and 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 I just was like, why? Like, OK, we get it. He doesn't get along with his brother. Like they could have established that in five minutes. So we finally get this. And then the rest of the movie until the last like two minutes is the again, repeating the same lesson, the same problem over and over and over again. And a lot of the decisions that he makes and the ways he goes about doing things just don't make any sense. Um, from like a narrative, like from the way that like a normal human being would behave. So like this isn't supposed to be, I mean, yes, there's magic in the sense of like he gets a wish granted, but like there's not like magic in the sense of like I can suspend belief of like how normal people would respond to a situation. Right. Um, So, yeah, it just irked me the entire movie. So that is how I felt. I I wrote down almost no, like, I literally wrote down nothing. (laughs) I wrote down nothing. (laughs) I do not like this movie. Um, Okay, Al. Thanks, Val. (laughs) My first, one of my first favorite moments is I wrote, hot dad, hot dad, hot dad, hot dad. dad." (laughs) Because we haven't had a hot dad in a while. True. And if I could hear that man's, if I could hear that man's true accent, It'd probably be like, (laughs) okay, um, here's some of my favorite quotes. Um, It's a turkey, you big stupid. (laughs) (laughs) You got jelly on my skates. Cool, like Gary. I never met a cool Gary. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) You can win a freezer. (laughs) And then my last favorite quote is i have to deliver this chicken it's personal (laughs) (laughs) um a couple of my favorite moments were the acting by the bullies um one of the guys was like talking out the side of his mouth (laughs) and he was like yeah we're we're going there (laughs) chaos and then my all-time favorite part of this movie is the fake rain in the last scene of the movie. <laughs> if you don't know how like rain works in like television or movies, typically they just have someone with a hose hanging out nearby and then they cover the people with like an umbrella or a shade of some sort so it looks like it's raining behind them. It was clear that these actors were not wet, but there was <laughs> rain behind them. And then mom and dad had like an umbrella and it was like raining sideways. You know, there's a guy like, <laughs> like, oh, it's just like, yeah. No, it's not, oh. <laughs> you know, oh my God. I, yeah, I, I really didn't hate this movie. Maybe it's just cause I, was in a mood where I was, I needed, I needed some, some good in my life. Sure. (laughs) And I'm not like judging you for liking it. Oh, you're judging me. (laughs) You are so, don't even lie to me right now. You're so (laughs) judging me. No, I, I felt like I could have felt about this movie the way that I felt about um, Phantom the Megaplex. Mm -hmm. Because they felt kind of similar to each other in some ways, tonally. But 
I just didn't. And like, it might just be because I've seen Phantom of the Megaplex before as Maybe. a young person, you know, who knows? Val, so you, we already know, I'm just going to ask out of posterity, question mark sake, any quotes or moments? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even say favorite. I just said any. <laughs> I literally did not write one quote. Cool. Um, <clears throat> a couple things that I noticed. Okay. So I think we can... This isn't a spoiler anymore. He wishes away his brother. And then part of what happens is like in this alternate universe where his brother is not his brother, his brother still exists, but he's a child star. And Mm -hmm. so he's like everywhere. He's like on posters. He's on TV. He's everywhere. And so at one point during a party at his house, Alex picks up a magazine and it just says women. (laughs) Like it's just the title of the magazine. (laughs) And also... Why is a child star on the cover of a women's magazine? Because, like, if you're thinking of this as, like, a Cosmo or an L or something like that, they put hot guys on that magazine, not, like, like <laughs> not children. <laughs> that's like, uh, like, Jacob Tremblay being on the cover. Right. Of it's like freaking Cosmo. weird. <laughs> And then he's not only is that weird as hell, then he cuts out the picture of his brother and puts it basically on like a bobblehead next to his, his bed. I'm so glad you're mentioning that because I'm not going to mention that in the synopsis. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Like, it is so it's just so bizarre. Oh, I have one quote. I have one quote. OK. <laughs> So in the real world, he has a crush on this uh, cheerleader who's like very popular and he's not. And then in the new universe, when he when his brother doesn't exist, he is cool, which honestly is kind of inexplicable. Like they kind of explain it, but it's to me, it's kind of whatever. But anyway, he's now dating her. Mm -hmm. And at one point he's like talking to his old friend who is a loser, right? So Mm -hmm. she goes, (laughs) see if you can tell why I like this quote. She goes, give me an L, give me an O, give me an S-S-O-R. What does that spell? Literally walked away and was like, (laughs) loser? I contemplated, I contemplated my spelling of loser. Because she was trying to say losers. For I'm not I, I, a good seven minutes after she. <laughs> I literally had to pause it. So I was like, "What?" <laughs> like no one okay, thought this. Uh, she is from New Zealand, Val. God. <laughs> oh my god, I about died. So that was my one favorite quote, and then okay. of course, um, my absolute favorite moment was when. Out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wrote that down too. Which, by the way, yeah, which, by the way, is the only song that I know how to play from start to finish on piano. Wow. If you didn't understand any of that, A Thousand Miles by Vanessa <laughs> Carlton plays in this decom. In this decom. <laughs> they spent the entire budget on getting the rights. On getting, to a thousand yeah. Miles. Crazy. Okay. All right. Well, um, since there are child actors in this movie, we're going to keep all of our clothes on while we wish away, (laughs) wish ourselves to Spoiler City. Tops are on. Yep. For women's women magazine. (laughs) All right. I'm going to go through the synopsis as fast as humanly possible. We see some friends and two brothers playing a paintball in the forest, which is how we open. And I wrote down. Val, hold your laughter. No narrator. I was very excited for no narrator. Uh, Then we see like the older brother, which is um, Alex taking care of the little brother, which is Stevie. Alex is AJ Troth and Stevie is Spencer Breslin. Then we see like them being a family together. So the first 20 minutes of this movie is, is, you know, intro. So they're like, let's go to pet adoption at the park. And AJ wants a dog and Stevie wants a rabbit. And then Stevie gets his way all all the time and they end up with a turkey (laughs) and the parents buy it for him because he wanted a turkey. Goobble gobble. Goobble gobble. (laughs) 
then we see AJ at school the next day. The bullies come, or not even at school. They're just, he's walking the turkey. I can't even get this movie straight. Okay. <laughs> he's walking the turkey as you do when you have a pet turkey. You walk it on the streets with a leash, and the bullies come up and make fun of him and about how he's bad at football. And they literally take an entire pizza and spread it on his head. And I wrote, Waste of a Pizza. I wrote that too. Um, oh my God. We're so on the same wavelength, except for the <laughs> likeness of this movie. <laughs> then um, we see a montage of Stevie messing up and AJ being mad. And then there's a narrator, <laughs> which like legitimately never comes back. <sighs> and it does. It like comes back. I don't even, it either doesn't come back or what comes back like one time. I was so mad, but we see Steve, like Stevie touches his stuff and like he's very annoying and he has three things that he's not supposed to touch which are val uh his coins his skates and i couldn't remember the third one either i was hoping you would so um (laughs) then of course we see him touching all of these things and then he sits down and has a talk and he's like don't do the don't do this and then of course uh stevie's being a little bitch and so he's like (laughs) going and like still touching his stuff and so then they're they're grounded for two weeks or he's like, you're banned from my room for two weeks. And then he like lets him in anyway. And then, then blah, blah, blah. He's being nice. And then Stevie ruins it by wearing the skates and getting jelly on them. Which like so many things could be done to those skates. Why, what? Getting jelly on them? You got jelly on my skates. <laughs> <laughs> I should also say that this entire time, AJ is trying to be like, parents, help me out. And the parents are very, be nice to your brother. And your brother's always right. And blah, blah, blah. So Mm -hmm. that's where this dynamic is. The parents never really believe him that he's a problem. There's also an undertone of like, they don't have a ton of money. And so like, he suffers in some ways because of that. So like, he has like secondhand stuff. He can't go to football camp. So he can't get better at football. Like, there's this, this like undertone of that as well. The only reason I mention it is because it comes back later. Yeah, thank you. So then they're at the football game. The cheerleader makes a bench warmer joke. He's in the game and he does really bad. He immediately gets sacked. Then we see his relationship with Lelaine and he like Lelaine likes him, but he likes the cheerleader, but he's not popular. And like Lelaine clearly looks in the camera during this lunch scene. <laughs> And then I had not learned his name. And so I thought she said James. And then I learned like 30 minutes later that his name was Alex and that his best friend's name was James. But he talks about bullies and like not being like one of them and blah, blah, blah. Then a guy with stuff falls over. That is our mayor from Alley Cat Strike, dad from uh, Sister Sister. He trips and falls on a french fry but stevie stops him from falling see there at the mall because he was for uh alex aj was supposed to babysit so he brought stevie to the mall with him and he said sit on this bench and so he went blah 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 and then he was like you deserve a good here's here's a special coin he has one wish and then of course stevie doesn't listen and sit on the bench for the rest of the time he's running around the mall and he goes to the arcade and then uh it, AJ can't find Stevie in the whole entire mall. And then he finds Stevie with security and he's in trouble. And then they're both grounded. But but Stevie is not grounded for as long because Alex is the one that left him. And blah, 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 blah. Then Stevie feels bad for grounding his brother. So he gives his brother the coin. And as he's like in bed, he's like, oh, I wish I right now. I wish I didn't have a little brother. Oops. So then he wakes up. There's an alarm clock. There's a dog. He's in a weird room. It's really tidy. Um, He's got like player of the year awards. And it's like, AKA Stevie be gone. Stevie is no longer around. And then um, he's talks to his parents. He's like, where's Stevie? And mom and dad are like robots at this point. They're like professionals all of a sudden. Yeah. They're, they like make lots of money and they're not really around. And he's like already missing his brother. And then the TV says like Stevie on TV and it's Terrence Russell McCormick, which whomever chose that name, whether it be author or it be producer or it be writer or it be director, terrible name choice. (laughs) Terrence Russell McCormick, get out of here. It just feels like Neil Patrick Harris. Like it just feels like you know trying I mean? too hard. Yeah. yeah. So he's like already missing his brother. And then he goes to school and then like people are paying attention to him. The cheerleader is his girlfriend. There's a party at his place after school. He's no longer friends with Lelaine. He's getting good grades because he's the star football player. We have a football montage. He started bad because it was like him from the old 
thing, but then he got good because he was being supported. Then after the football game, there's a party at his house and uh, don't let it happen again of being bad at the beginning from his girlfriend cheerleader. And then James is there as chicken boy. He delivers chicken. He delivers chicken. Uh, It's like with pizza delivery boy. It's a chicken delivery boy. Alex, AJ apologizes to James. The cheerleader girlfriend is mad. He goes to abs and the lane hates that he calls her abs because she's like, no one calls me that. And then um, Lelaine pours milk on him. She's like, why are you talking to me? We're not friends. Also at the party, the bullies want him to put pizza on James's head the way they did to him. And he wouldn't do it, but then they do it Mm -hmm. and he doesn't stop them. Yeah. Then he has a weird conversation with his dad and then he wins this like special award um, for being like the best player of all time ever. And he isn't happy about it. And then we see a sad montage of him being sad. And then he runs into Larry uh, who owns coin world and he broke his leg and is in a wheelchair because Stevie wasn't there on the bench to save him from slipping on the French fry. Um, then Lelaine hands it to him and like yells at him, says all this stuff and is like, you are terrible, blah, 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 blah. And then the bullies come around at the mall and they're like, they look like they're like punching egg McMuffins and they're, they're like, punching blah, 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 cheeseburgers. Blah. It's okay. so weird. Very weird. And that's, that's where the guy I was like talking about was about. <laughs> But Lelaine was at the mall getting raffle tickets for something. I don't care enough to know what that something <laughs> is. Um, and then we see a scene where the dog is ruining his sleep. And so he's not sleeping well. And then there's the charity thing. And mom and dad have no time, but they have more money because they have no second child. So this is where they're like in a Porsche or a McLaren. And they're like, y- you're a great son, but they're never around. Mm hmm. Then we're at this like thing where he's giving this speech and Lelaine is here and she's at this like there's no reason really for her to be there. And then she is reading a book during it. So she like inconspicuously like I'm not interested. And then he says something interesting and she like looks up and is interested. He basically says like a speech about be careful what you wish for like blah, 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 blah. But I did write does speech about missing it. And I don't know what it was because I was texting Val if you want to include any (laughs) other information about the speech here. Well, so he essentially first the reason why he gets Lelaine's attention or Abby's attention is because he mentions being in alternate universes and she's Mm. like into that stuff. So he like hooks her because he knows her really, really well. They're best friends. Right. Um, And so she's like intrigued. And then he sort of talks about like how he would miss. So like essentially he's he's couching like missing his brother in a speech, but he can't say that outright. So he sort of says like, I miss him. I mean it Mm -hmm. because he's like trying to kind of like cover up what he's actually talking about. But everyone is still like, that was weird. (laughs) Yeah. And, and friends, this is why we depend on Val in our lives. Uh, so then after the speech is done, um, he tries to sneak in to see Terrence Russell McCormick because as Val mentioned before, throughout this entire movie, he pops up in magazines and on TV and people talk about the show. And so he's everywhere. And apparently he records right down the street. So he tries to sneak on set to go visit him and he runs into chicken boy who is delivering chicken and, um, they're talking about it and he runs in and the chicken falls on the ground. He's like, I can't deliver dirty chicken. And he's like, I need to deliver this chicken. It's personal which is one of my favorite lines. Um, so then he like jo- he gives, uh, I wrote Josh, but I think it's Jeremy or Jake or James. 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 Um, and uh, he, he pays James money to be like, I will deliver the chicken. I have to like go see him. Um, and he like gets into his room to deliver the chicken. And Terrence has no idea who he was. So his hope was that Terrence would see him and he'd be like, you're my brother. Um, and then security gets called. There's a lunatic in here who thinks I'm his brother. They have like a mini conversation before that happens, but it's not important because we don't really like Spencer Breslin. Um, then he is sad and walking around what I thought was Seattle to a thousand miles <laughs> by Vanessa Carlton. And there's a lot of like those speed up montage like moments like where yeah. like. Like the cars they, are going by and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like super, super fast as he's like walking down the street or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, very funny. Uh, literally like open mouth, like <laughs> amazing. Um, Stevie finds him. So Stevie was like interested in, in this experience. He finds him and then they hang out since they like see something in one another that they're yearning for. So Stevie being famous, doesn't have a brother and has an absent mom. So both of them are in this parallel life together with like absent parents and no siblings. Right. And like, that was one of the things at the beginning <clears throat> Alex made himself feel better because he was like, oh, like Stevie's life is great. He's famous. He's rich. You know, like I don't feel bad about making this wish because this is awesome for him, too. Yeah. Uh, and then he finds out that his life is miserable. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not all all a bag of beans. <laughs> and so then they're like, oh, how do we how he's like, how do we turn back? And they're going to look for the coin. And so they have to go find the coin guy and, and the coin store doesn't exist anymore. But he realizes that Larry signed up for the raffle. And so they go meet Lelaine. So then they find they go through all of her like a thousand entries for the raffle and find his information. And then they go to his old house. He moved to a retirement home. So they have to like sneak into the retirement home, but then straight up walk in makes no sense. Also, he's like 55. Yeah, he was like not old. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. At all. Um, and then him and him and Lelaine have a heart to heart because she knows that he's like uh, from this like parallel universe. And he was like, the closest thing I had to a girlfriend was you. Kind of a cute moment. They had good chemistry. I think so, too. And then they get to the retirement home. There's they're like, <gasps> And then they're just playing accordions. Um, it was so stupid. Yeah, it was so weird. Um, and then they they talk through all the coins. Um, Larry's like, I sold all my coins. I gave all my coins away. These are the only ones I have. If it's not here, which I know there's no coin with an owl on it, then someone else has it and I don't have receipts. Like, blah, blah, blah. So they're like, okay, I guess we're screwed. So then they're, go they're sad about their past life together, which is what I wrote. And then the police come pick up Stevie because he is a missing movie star um, and everyone is sad. And then um, I wrote, oh, my God, his dad got him coins as a cheer up gift. So uh, I, I don't know if we mentioned I, or Val, we mentioned it when we said the three things Stevie wasn't supposed to touch were his coin collection. So that's why coins are kind of like th weaved throughout this. So mm -hmm. even as in this parallel universe, AJ is still interested in coins. And so his dad knows him well enough a little bit to get him a cheer up gift and he and he's such a dick about it yeah it pissed me off it. his um, dad gets him this lovely gift where he was paying attention to him when he said he liked the ancient coins the best mm -hmm. and so he went and got him a bunch of ancient coins and he, he's like thanks <laughs> and his dad is devastated and i would be too if i did if i went to that trouble to do yeah, something nice. Yeah, but if nice. you were like an angsty 14 year old and your parents did something nice for you, I would have probably re reacted the same way. Ugh. I would have been like, thanks, mom. Teenagers are terrible. <laughs> there was one Christmas where Santa got me overalls and I said out loud, why did Santa get me overalls? <laughs> now I'm like, can Santa that. only buy me overalls? But I was an angsty kid and I was like, what? Like, this is stupid. I don't want overalls. I want Nintendo games. <laughs> um, so he's sad. So he throws the box of coins against the wall because he's so upset because he's like, none of these coins are going to be it. Um, but then one of the coins is sticking up and it's spinning and it's sticking up and it's not falling down. And he's like, <laughs> and so then he wishes, I wish I never made the first wish. And but wait. Before he makes the wish, there's this chaotic moment because he yells when he sees the coin, right? Oh, he gets excited. yeah. I blocked this out. And then his parents are acting as if, like, he's doing something really Illegal dangerous. Or bad to himself. Yeah, in his room. And they're, like, banging down the door trying to, like, break in. They're like, I'm going to call the fire department. It's going to be okay. Yeah. All he did was yell. Like, it was so bizarre. <laughs> This yeah. whole moment. And I know they just like needed it to be chaotic so that mm -hmm. he was like feeling rushed and like had to get the wish right. But it was just stupid. Yeah. So then he says, I wish I never made the first wish. 
everything goes back to normal. And then there's an As You Wish song. So I said, this better be Lelaine. And you bet your sweet ass it is. (laughs) She sings a song called You Wish. (laughs) Um, And then he asks her to go skating just the two. Hey, do you want to go skating? Just the two of us. And then he basically says, hey, Fiona, cheerleader from before. Fuck you. He doesn't actually say that, but he's like, he's like, hey, Fiona, you're not my girlfriend. And she's like, okay. (laughs) Um, And then we see a montage of all of them teaching uh, Stevie how to skate. And he um, is in all of this happens in the pouring rain before that montage. And he's like, Stevie, you're alive. And he's like, yeah, what are you talking about? So everything, it's like nothing happened. And that's the end of the movie. Well, um, done with the, it's, no, Val, there's there's no more. It's done. <laughs> no, I have to talk about a couple of things. First of all, when he wakes up after he makes the second wish, mm-hmm. he is wearing the most ridiculous wig that I have ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because there's a whole thing where like he has kind of ratty hair at the beginning and then he cuts mm-hmm. his hair or his hair is different when he wakes up in the alternate er- universe. What I don't understand is why they didn't just film this scene before they cut his hair because yeah. he looks like literally ridiculous in this way. Yeah. So that's thing number one. Thing number two, when he f- sees his brother after like at the end, he, he has just broken his bike. <laughs> and he's mm-hmm. like, I don't care. Um, it's funny. Like, he's like, I'm sorry I broke your bike. <laughs> He's like scared he's going to beat him up. Yeah. And then um, the last thing that I wanted to point out is that so there's sort of like this epilogue after the rain scene where they're teaching him how to skate. And then he finds the coin and makes a wish to be an amazing skater. So at the very end of the movie, Spencer Breslin is like an amazing skate, like roller skater. And here's the thing that undermines the whole movie. (laughs) Because the whole movie is be careful what you wish for. Even something that seems like a throwaway is going to have repercussions. Uh, Okay. Well, Um, that was fun. Yeah. Oh, you know what that noise means. It's bingo time. All right. I'm going to start today. Okay. We're going to go one hit wonder song. I mean, so many to choose from. There were a lot of musics. There were a lot of musics. I already added them to our playlist. Thank you. Because one of them is basically by the Irish Backstreet Boys. Which one was that? Westlife. Oh, yeah. I added Mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did not recognize any of their bigger music, but they have five million monthly listeners. Wow. So it's kind of like. The the I the Ireland version of the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, I remember them existing. Like I yeah, recognized I the name when I saw it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, but yeah, there was obviously a thousand miles. Which like mm-hmm. I know Vanessa Carlson has done other stuff, but I feel like this is the song that like it's, everyone knows. She's only got like one other really, and most, yeah. some people don't even know it. So right. that and Lelaine's. I was going to say yeah, Lelaine's song. There was also like another song by a band called junk Mm. um that was playing towards the beginning um that probably qualifies so you got a lot to choose from junk junk (laughs) what a weird word i hate (laughs) it okay val next box breaking the fourth wall looking into the camera it wasn't on purpose but lalane looked in the camera yikes she did i watched her do it I, i i once once again mouth agape (laughs) <laughs> fair enough uh holiday themed nope nah <laughs> the holidays last. are past we gotta go get through another couple movies before we get before yeah we get they it. didn't do like a christmas or holiday movie this, they said this, in that 2002. ultimate christmas present hit so hard we don't need one for no they day. did there was another one in between ultimate christmas present remember no it was the Twas one the night with, yeah that's what I was trying to forget about it, Val. So you see me remember it. So. I'm going to remember this. Sorry. Clunky metaphor. Be so, careful what you wish for. Yes. But like I was trying to see if there was an actual metaphor of like something representing that. Mm. And there wasn't really. I think there was a missed opportunity in something. So there wasn't a clunky metaphor, but there could have been. And okay. here's what it is. So when he wakes up. 
after he made the wish. One of the biggest indicators, like visual indicators, is that his room was red. The house is like warm colors Mm -hmm. at the beginning. And then when he wakes up, everything is blue. Yeah. So it's like cold colors. And I get that that's what obviously they were going for. But here's the They should have like changed the school colors and changed the like theme of all of the parallel universe sure that would have been that would have worked but what i was about to say is like the the expression the grass is always greener Mm. it would have made sense to make it all green because you think that the life that someone else has or like a situation that's different than yours is is better but that's because you're not living it as soon as you experience that you realize that it wasn't actually greener so it was a missed a missed clunky metaphor for me. All right. Let's move right along. I don't have any comments. <laughs> Parents who just don't get it. Yeah, mostly just because they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Non-parent adult. Larry. Yep. We can count Larry, who was Lair inexplicably old. in a senior center, even though he was not even of retirement. A day age. over 48. <laughs> Um, someone too famous for a TV movie. No. No. <laughs> Competition to resolve the central problem. No. No. A montage sequence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of montages in this movie. Mm. Cliche villains. Bullies. High school bullies? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're just so on the same page sometimes. We're like, bullies? Yeah. <laughs> at like the same time. <laughs> uh, clothes or items you owned? So I had almost the exact outfit. So at the very end of the movie during the rain scene, the mom is wearing like, like, track pant like bell-bottom track pants with like a stripe down the side and Mm. then like and they're like red with blue stripe and then the the jacket she's wearing uh is like blue with a red stripe so it's like inverted but it's like matching i had almost that exact outfit that's not surprising to me (laughs) that's not a surprising fact that was like my aesthetic at at this exact time like at two in 2003 that Mm -hmm. is what you would find me wearing yeah Rotten Tomatoes, 40 to 60 percent. OK, I am going to say 41. Val, for the first time in months, you are within five. What is it? <laughs> and we get the point. It's 46. Woo! Too high, but still good. I'm glad I got it. <laughs> Too high. <laughs> Uh, next box is happily ever after, which for all my Disney heads who always hear me talk about the fireworks show at Magic Kingdom, it's coming back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Almost kissing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're wanted. Lelaine wanted one. Yeah, there also was a cheek kiss from the fake girlfriend, the like cool girl. So technically we got it. Yeah, we got it. But also like there was some especially when he's like, you want to go skating? Just the two of us like that. That was like there was some tension. Yeah. Uh, Someone who became famous. No, I feel like they all were famous at the same time and stayed pretty stagnant. Yeah. 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 Betraying of one's real friends or values. Yes. Yes. We haven't had this one in a while. We haven't. It's basically the whole movie. Yeah. That's literally the repercussions of your freaking actions. Yeah. Your childhood crush. Yes. Bet yes. Your sweet yes, little yes, butt, yes, AJ. Yes, AJ. AJ. Not AJ. in this because I never saw this, but in. Oh, um, I did see this. Yeah. But in Even Stevens, yes. Obviously bad special effects or stunts. Yes. Yeah. There's a moment which we didn't talk about, which makes no sense, which is a theme in this movie where uh, towards the beginning, like right after he gets his wish, he goes to school and he doesn't know where he sits because he doesn't sit in the spot that he would normally sit in the classroom. And he finally figures it out 
and for no reason at all, he like flips through the air to to get to his seat. And first of all, it defies the laws of physics and it, and it looks absolutely ridiculous, but it also just makes no freaking sense. Especially because when he starts to play football, he's bad. So That's, how is he magically of good at flipping? Exactly. Like it's inconsistent completely yeah. with the rest of the movie. So it's just stupid. So silly. And a bad special effect or yeah. Disney Channel star. Yes. yes. Very much. Yes. Yeah. Two of them. Musical number. No. No. <laughs> hell sad all right but let's move on to the next one because it's exciting we've got magic yes we do so much magic thank goodness it redeems itself by getting hopefully getting us a bingo hopefully someone says the title of the movie i don't know do they no i don't think so no well val i'm gonna let you know it probably won't affect us this box oh good Maybe it would. Maybe it would. I don't think so, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Scooby Dude. Yes. Yeah, because they, they, like, run around. Out. Yeah. The heroes create the problem. Oh, yeah. Be careful what you wish for. And lead is a fish out of water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of is. When he gets his wish, he has no idea what's going on. Yeah. Well, Val, it did affect... <laughs> No, but we had two other ones. Whoa! Oh, we had one lucky hit, twice. Hit, lucky twice. We had our first line down one hit wonder song, cool non-parent adult, closer items you own, betraying of one's real friends or values, and magic. And then we go diagonally up from magic, your childhood crush, happily ever after, a montage sequence, and parents who just don't get it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> um, all right. Congrats on two bingos, Val. Thank you, too. Thank you. Um, now we're going to keep moving right along because my internet is terrible. Um, Val, welcome to the game of your wish. Uh, <laughs> similar to the title of the movie, your wish. In this game... Uh, this has nothing to do with the movie, uh, which is good because you hated this movie. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of roles in a movie and you are going to create your dream cast. This is the cast that Ooh. you wish existed. So these are the roles that I'm looking for. We're both going to do this. OK, so I'll come up with my okay. come up with yours. There's no time limit on this, but sooner than rather than rather than later. You, sure, sure, sure. Um, so we've got we're looking for a lead. A best friend. Okay. A romantic interest. A boss. A neighbor. A villain. A wild card character. You have to give the role in the movie and who they are. And both of us have to have a part. You can put this as like an extra wild card where you're like, we're just extras or like Val is the lead and these are my people or Al is this. So, but both okay. of us also have to have a part, but you can also add us as extra people. I'll read them one more time so you can write them down. We've got lead, best friend, romantic interest, boss, neighbor, villain, a wild card character, and an Al and Val part. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I can go first. Okay. Because yours are probably going to be better. So I guarantee they're not. So basically, mine are reflective of what I'm watching right now. Great. <laughs> so it's so what's top of mind. So I made myself the lead because I need to do that more. Great. I love that. I made you my best friend. Oh my God. I'm surprised. <laughs> my romantic lead is Chris Evans. Into it. <laughs> My boss is Catherine Hahn. Nice. Good choice. Yeah. Giving energy. Like I just recently saw a clip of her from Parks and Rec and she's so funny as mm -hmm. like the political consultant. Oh, yeah. She's great. I want that energy. 
I my neighbor, I want to be Tatiana Maslani because I just think she's great in She Hulk. She's just adorable and fun. Yeah. Um, my villain is Paul Rudd because he's <laughs> never played a villain ever. And I think it would be so funny Amazing. for him to play a villain. My wild card is an additional romantic lead played by Darcy Carden. Because nice. I'm obsessed with her in A League of Their Own. And I think that's it. Nice. Yay. Yay. All right. My lead uh, is neither of us. It would be Gemma Chan. Oh, uh, she her. deserves to be a leading lady. Um, she in, does. In something soon. Uh, her best friend would be upcoming comedian Kat Cohen. Uh, she knows Ryan. They she there's a story she did on podcast like years and years ago um, because they did Edinburgh uh, Fringe Festival Baby Wants Candy interns together. So I've been following along with her ever since we saw her show. And she's like, she has a Netflix special out. Everyone should go watch it. It's wow. Funny. Um, my romantic interest would be Michael B. Jordan, because who doesn't want him as a romantic <laughs> interest? Um, the boss would be Hillary Duff because I had to throw some dick in there somewhere. <laughs> um, the neighbors on either side would be Alan Val. <laughs> um, our villain would be David Schwimmer because that would he's be a really, great villain. He that would be he, funny, but like a, he, this he, is like a he, silly one, so he'd be like a silly villain. Have you ever seen Band of Brothers? Mm -mm. he is that like cool it's amazing he's so I'll have good. to see it and then our wild card uh they're at uh panera bread and they see jane lynch <laughs> <laughs> and they call her jane lunch because they're at panera bread that's <laughs> my movie i love it yay thanks for playing you wish that's not how i said it the first time but that's how it's gonna end isn't Gemma Chan, wasn't she the lead in Eternals? Val. But Harry Styles is in that one. He's in, not in it. He's in the <laughs> last two minutes that's spoiling the next one. She also was. Um, she was in uh, Crazy Rich he, Asians. She is also the lead on a show called Humans. Cool. Where she plays a like robot uh, that has feelings. Nice. That's very good. She needs to be a lead in a rom-com. She's great. That's what I was casting. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Um, thanks for playing, Val. Thanks for playing, Al. Thanks for being my friend, Val. Thanks for being my neighbor, Al. <gasps> <gasps> We'd be such great neighbors. Like, we neighbor, would. where we're, like, screaming at each other, like, over her. And we're just like, hey! <laughs> It'd be so silly. It'd be so silly. I love so it. So silly. Um... Well, I loved this, even though you hated you wish. But I love recording with you. <gasps> Thanks. I know I'm I'm happy to be back in the swing of things for us here at D Commentaries. Heck yeah. Um, thank you. Like, subscribe, review, uh, tell a friend, tell a foe, tell your mom, tell us if you have comments or questions or concerns, buy some merch. Um, and our next movie is Pixel Perfect. I think that this one has Ricky Ullman in it. I think you're right. Who I do believe now goes by Raviv Ullman. Oh, okay. I think, he changed, his, I think he changed his name. <laughs> or he went back to his like birth name after choosing like a celebrity name because of Hollywood. I gotcha. believe it is different. But I'm excited to watch it. Me too. Even though it feels a little bit like making a hot robot friend. But... We'll see what it's about. I don't know. I might be wrong. Couldn't Gemma Chan also say making a hot robot friend? <laughs> yeah, but that that show is an exploration of why that's wrong. <laughs> mm, okay, great. Uh, well, we're going to be the exploration of why Pixel Perfect is wrong. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Bye, Val. Bye, Al. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash dcommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at dcommentaries. Dcommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. 
To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Ellie.